and she's not the only person who told me the same thing. This guy and his son may not be scam artists, but they seem to be associated with one. Yeah, I'm embarrassed. I did something really stupid. I did something that every time I tell the story, I think, how did I do that? This is Lynn, a college professor and writer. She has her doctorate, yet Lynn says she fell for a scam. Lynn blames this man, David Willett, for luring her in and telling her to trust a mysterious money man named Bob Montgomery. So you're talking to me because... She says that you were the one that kind of uh, led the lamb to slaughter, so to speak. <laughs> I feel horrible. This is Rick, a computer software developer from Chicago. Would have never done this at all except for, for Dave Willett. Yep, Dave Willett and his Bob Montgomery connection. Yeah, I've never, I've never even met Bob Montgomery. Why were you leading them to Bob Montgomery if you don't really know Bob Montgomery? Because it's what I do. Lynn had written several movie scripts. I've been trying to get the scripts produced and decided I was going to just open my own company and do it. And this is where David Willett comes in. I ran into David on LinkedIn and said that he knew everybody. Including people with money. And right off the bat, he tells me he knows this man who has millions upon millions of dollars to invest in companies. I first met with Lynn in the summer of 2020. She told me how she'd been duped out of more than $60,000. Then, a few months ago, I heard from Rick. I would have checked this out a lot more, except for the fact that um, I had known Dave Willett at this time for about three years. Rick met David at a conference in Ann Arbor a few years back. Rick was trying to develop some new software and needed funding. Both say David Willett hooked them up with a British man named Bob Montgomery. Bob was involved in a company called Beaumont Capital in London. Even though Rick and Lynn only wanted a few hundred thousand dollars for their projects, Bob Montgomery wanted to loan them way more. Millions! And so they didn't want to just invest in a movie, they wanted to invest in me and my company. By now, David Willett's son, Doug Willett, was in the mix. What do these guys know about financing anyway? David's a newspaper guy. Doug runs a technology company. Doug told me that he was a tech guy and that he was just doing tech things for Bob Montgomery. And then suddenly he went from tech guy to now he's the assistant. But Lynn trusted Doug Willett. She'd gone to high school with him. Now it's time for the borrowers to jump through some hoops. The first step is uh, my investors uh, require that you do this through a company in Dominica, in the Caribbean. So step one is we need to, you need to set up that company and, and we'll do it for you cost you $10,000. Both Lynn and Rick came up with the 10 grand. They were each promised an LLC company through a law firm in the Caribbean, which somehow was important to these transactions. Rick questioned the professionalism of the place. He texts Doug Willett, the law firm is not very professional. Why would investors worth multi-millions skip on selecting a law firm to manage these deals? Doug replied, they are not skimping. I have met the attorney in the islands. He is the real deal. It gets worse. Then each was told they had to come up with $50,000 to pay legal fees. I would never have done it except for the fact that Dave Willett was part of it. David kept telling me, Lynn, if anything goes wrong, I'll pull out my checkbook, I'll write you a check, and you can just walk away from the deal. Both Lynn and Rick had to borrow money from family and friends to come up with the 50 grand. My biggest shame in this is I went to a very dear friend of mine and I told him I needed help. And so he gave me money. But there's more. The next step was uh, Montgomery said you have to pay, uh, I think it was about 500000 uh, which was insurance to make sure that if something went wrong with the deal, the investors would get their money back. Both suspected they were being scammed, but say they were encouraged to keep going. That's when Doug said to me, Lynn, I know this guy's for real because I've been to his house in the Philippines. Doug had said he had visited Montgomery's uh, home in the Philippines. The Philippines? I thought this guy was from London. I was a fool. I own that. I made a stupid decision. I own that. But I was going to stop the bleeding right there. 
Lynn was at 60 grand. So was Rick, so far, but he kept going. Rick flew to London to deliver a half million dollars he borrowed from his parents. He met the alleged Bob Montgomery, who said for convenience sake, he'd come to Rick. I thought it was weird that we were meeting in the hotel lobby. Um, and if it hadn't been for the fact that, you know, Dave and Doug introduced me to this guy, I would have thought that was very weird. Doug was in London and, and wrote the contracts that we eventually signed. Doug Willett. Doug Willett, right. Months went by. Then Rick was back into Lisbon, Portugal to get his millions in investment money. Doug was there, too. Doug was staying at Montgomery's uh, apartment in Lisbon, which I thought was weird. But again, after shelling out $700,000, Rick came back home empty-handed. So how's it end? About two or three months ago, I heard from Doug Willett that, uh, or Dave, maybe both of them, that Montgomery died. Okay. And his real name wasn't Montgomery. Well, I guess I'm not going to be able to talk to him. Let's see what Dave has to say. I got to ask you about this lady, Lynn Smeltzer, and this loan that you got her a couple of years ago. What can you tell me about that? She didn't get a loan. Okay. I, I connected her to somebody that uh, thought could help her, mm -hmm. but that's all I had to do with it. She borrowed money. You were coaxing her to go with this. You said it was a good deal. You said you were going to help her. It's not and true. That's not true? It's not true. Then I mentioned Rick. He says you were the guy that introduced him to this Bob Montgomery guy. So I got two yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. What is it you want me to say? I, I, I've been introducing people to other people. Why? For, <laughs> because I like helping people. But you're not helping them. You, you hurt these well, people. It, these it, people it, both lost a ton of money. I mean, a ton and, of and money. How do you know that? I, they have receipts and stuff. Would you like to see some of the stuff? Yeah. Well, no, I don't. I show them anyway. Money transfers, text messages from Doug to Rick, phone messages from David like this one. Give me a call back. I think I've sorted out what I want to do here in terms of transfer these funds. I just don't get it. I, I understand you don't get it, and I have no obligation to say any more than I've said. Okay. Have a nice day. What about your son? What about What's, what, son? Well, what, well, he's really involved in this. He, Rick said he went to London and Lisbon, <laughs> Portugal, and your son was there with... Bob Why don't you Montgomery. Talk to him about I'm, that? I'm, I'm, I would like to. Yeah. Do you have a number for him? No. You don't have a number for your son? Good luck with your story. Hopefully, I'll fare better than Rick and Lynn, whose meeting David Willett was anything but lucky. I'm embarrassed. I, I was smarter than that, and I should have known. But I'm not going to let this happen to someone else. And that's why David and Doug are in hiding now, because I'm not letting this die. Now, David Mill Willett must have had his son's number because shortly after I met up with David, Doug called me. He says Montgomery is dead and gave me an attorney's name in Lisbon who would confirm this. I emailed that attorney twice and got no response. Doug admitted he was in London and Lisbon with Bob Montgomery, but would not answer when I asked him if he'd been to Montgomery's alleged home in the Philippines. He emailed me this statement. I am sorry that these people lost money on contracts that they either backed out on or were not able to execute on. Although familiar with their situations, I was not a party to either one of those contracts. In other words, I did not hold any legal obligation to or receive any benefit from those dealings. If Lynn and Rick want to try to shame me in the court of public opinion, that is on them. I wish them no ill will. And by the way, Lynn and Rick have contacted the FBI.